Hey, it's that time again. It's time for Twip Pro Photo Critique number 27. This is Twip. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Twip Pro Photo Critique. I'm here with my good friend, Mr. Troy Miller. Troy and I are gonna step through some of the latest submissions to the Twip Pro Photo Critique topic in our awesome Twip Pro community. Hey Troy, how's it going, man? How you doing, you hanging in there? I'm hanging in there, I'm doing good. I've got uh, I've got my candy sitting on the side. I've got uh, you know some good images to go through. We're ready. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Hey, are you, uh, you should be pretty excited right now, right? Because you're... You're coming up on a big event this coming weekend, right? Some... Excited? Yes. A little nervous. Well, actually, no. Yeah. This is this is this is not this weekend. It's the weekend after this weekend, right? This no, is... it's not, and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? I, I I'm not gonna fall for that twice. I could have sworn we were like three weeks out from M64 Live. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I need. I need exactly 22 more days to finish. Yeah, because I'm busy. I'm busy this weekend. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be. Here. I'm gonna be out of the country, man. I don't know. No, in all seriousness, for folks that don't know what we're joking about, uh, Troy Miller uh, is the guy behind the F64 Live conference. You can find it at f64live.com, and uh, it kicks off this weekend. And yours truly here is the keynote speaker by the grace of Mr. Troy Miller. So, how's it going? Are you uh, everything set up and ready to go? Are you just waiting for the, yep. for the heartbeats to show up? I'm just waiting for the train to arrive, everybody <laughs> to offload. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's going to be a good time, man. I can't wait for it. I, yeah, I yeah. can't wait. Yeah, so we're going to hang out. We're going to, you know, drink a little whiskey, you know. Yep. And I'm excited. I'm excited. Well, speaking of excited, uh, lots of good submissions in the Twit Pro community, huh? So Oh, yeah. It's you, like 13, yeah. 13 or 14 yeah. in there. Yeah, they've so. gotten a lot better. Yep. Well, the, the coin, I think I think you sort of uh, stirred the pot a little bit, you know, because a couple episodes ago you made some comments about how you weren't getting a lot. Right. So. Yeah. I, I said people were chicken or something. I don't know what was <laughs> going on. Yeah. You know? It's like, what's going on? All these talented photographers that are afraid to submit their images, you know, so if, a, if an image falls in the forest, doesn't make a sound. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh we've got lots of images that are no longer in the forest that we can uh, we can take a look at so i'm going to go ahead and screen share i'm going to screen share the twit pro community here here we are in the photo critique topic within twit pro um so before we do that did you have any like any thoughts of any trends that you saw in there because remember remember a couple of episodes ago there was this trend of uh what was it you know, we, we kept yeah, what was it there was a bunch of milky way shots yeah it was milky way and then it was pretty girls and then it was you know it, it, did you see any have you seen any trends on this one you know not really i think i think everybody's kind of grabbing images that they're proud of and that they want to that they want to share and throw out there and get a critique on i mean there's a good diversity this time yeah um so i mean there's always a good diversity but this time there's really quite a bit of of unique images in here so yeah. no i don't i don't see a specific pattern this time good 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 all right well let's dive in so i'm going to scroll yeah. down here to here we go the first one looks like it's from andy s and Andy says, uh, Red Moon, I purchased the Sony RX10 M4. Purchase it uh, as the camera I take when I don't want to carry a lot of equipment. This is a shot I took as part of testing how well it does at night. Proce processed in Photoshop. Uh, one, what is it? 1.6 seconds uh, at F4. ISO 100, focal length 220. The nice thing about this camera is it comes with a Zeiss lens and 24 F. P.S. Uh, let's bring this up big here. Look at that. All right. Have it big on the screen. What do you think? I like moonshots. Moonshots are cool. This Isn't is that this crazy. Is, that's like, yeah, that's just ridiculous. I know that uh, like Steve Razzle, uh, a fellow friend of ours, he does. He shoots the moon with his telescope mm -hmm. and it's just it's just an incredible thing to see. Um, I love the composition. I love where this is going. There, I'm trying to figure out what it is. There is a weird um, noise. There's a noise uh, halo. Yeah. A where, noise halo. Yeah. I was trying yeah to think or a non-noise halo or something, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, just out out, out from the moon, mm-hmm. there's definitely a clean area, and then the noise starts. Yeah, right about there. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe she didn't zoom in or something, or she was she was. A, yeah, this looks like when you edit something and you're too far away from it. You know, and you haven't zoomed in to sort of check what what your edits are or how your edits are affecting the image close right. up. Um, and we see this because we're blowing it up now, so we're, yeah. we're revealing this. So yeah, no, absolutely. The other thing for me was the there was two things that I that 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 stuck out that uh, stuck out to me. There's that little that I don't know. It's a polar ice ice cap on the bottom of the moon. <laughs> um, I was wondering what what is that? What is that cause from? Because I know that's not on the moon itself. So is that just uh, is that just because it was too bright there from the reflection of the sun, or what is that? Um, and then the other thing was the moon seemed a little bit soft to me. Did you notice that, or is that just atmospherics in there getting in the way? It could be atmospherics. I mean, it it depends on the lens that was used and stuff, but it doesn't look sharp. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking yeah. for the flag. I couldn't find the flag. You couldn't find the flag. No. Or the no. I, I zoomed in. Yeah, I zoomed in and and. Yeah, it's definitely not. It's definitely not sharp. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's such a cool shot though. I mean, from the composition, the distance. I mean, she was testing a new camera, so mm-hmm. um, makes sense. But you got to watch that that Photoshop. Whatever's going on with that noise, and then there's that line, that clean line. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Those that those definitely take away from it, especially when you zoom in. You you see those those two things. Well, the the whatever is on the bottom of the moon. Obviously, you'd see that. But right. If this were were distributed small, you may not see that grain issue. But if you were to like blow it up like we're doing here, or print it, you would you know you'd be like, ah, oh, how come I didn't? See <laughs> so. Yeah, definitely check these before you print. That's always a bummer, especially if you go big. Yeah, no, absolutely. Very good, Andy S. Thank you for that. Very cool. All right, so moving right along to the next image here. This one, another one from Andy S. Check it out. She says, uh, I don't do much street photography, but took this also when testing the Sony RX10 M4 converted to black and white Photoshop. The exposure was F3.5 ISO 640 at 1 1250th of a second. And let's bring this up. Uh, There we go. Okay. Yeah, look at that. The cool cowboy chilling. Yeah, yeah, just hanging out. Yeah, it's a very casual street shot. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's nice. Yeah. I, w- I mean, I wish we knew more context, what was going on, and, and facial expression or something. I mean, the body language is, he's just hanging out. So yeah. that, I mean, that tells us something. But it, sometimes, sometimes, like, for street photography, a little bit more context helps. Yeah. Maybe in the title or in, in the image. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, and I've been I've been sort of waving that flag for a while. You know, the idea of just add a little bit of story, a couple sentences, maybe of what you were thinking when you took the photo or how this guy got there. Like in this one, I could, you know, because it forces us not having anything. It forces us to sort of interpolate our own story. So when I look at this or it forces the viewer to interpolate their own story. So when I look at this, I'm thinking, Hey, this is a guy, you know, there's a parade going on and he's off to the side because he just, you know, wanted to get away from the crowd uh, and wanted to have it, have his little drink away from everybody. He's maybe a, he's a nonconformist or, or, <laughs> or some sort of misanthrope and he wanted to get away from the get away from the other humans. So he's hanging out there. Uh, plus, he hurt his arm the night before while riding <laughs> while bull riding and it's still well, bothering him. <laughs> It's still bothering him, so he's just waiting to go home, but his wife wants to stick around for a while, so he's just saying, I'm going to have a drink. So, <laughs> yeah, that's how my brain works. <laughs> no, but it's but it's so true, though. I mean, if, if you're going to stand there and take a photo, you got to think to yourself, oh, I want to share this with the world or share this with my friends because this is what I see, mm-hmm. right? Oh, this sunset is amazing, or, you know, oh, look at this car, or I want to make this model look a certain way, or in street photography, like, I want to tell this story um are are you conveying that because if you're standing there and it's noisy and you can smell the food and there's music playing and all those things are feeding into your experience when you take this photo we don't get all of that right right. so we're not we're not sure yeah i mean maybe you want to be mysterious and you don't want us to know what's going on and maybe that's your intent and that's fine Mm -hmm. yeah but yeah yeah again you know it's artistic interpretation right so 
Yeah, but cool shot though, huh? And cool, cool black and white processing too. Yeah, no, image is well handled. Everything's nice. I, I wish there was a little more space in front and on top, um, and you know you could take a little less from behind, so it felt like he was looking forward. Might be a little helpful just in the story, mm-hmm. but yeah, Very minor, cool. minor, minor. Cool. All right, Andy S. Rocking it, taking over. All right, next one uh, is from Mark Harris. Mark says, on the week beginning July 22nd, I was at Maine Media Workshops in uh, an intimate portrait with Joyce Tennyson. We did a lot of direct portraits. I'll post one another week. And we were encouraged to experiment with other techniques. I added nine stops of neutral density at about 4.10 p.m. on a partially sunny day. For an average, for an exposure of two seconds at f 56 ISO one twenty fifth, ISO one twenty five, and the camera on a tripod with a wire trigger. This was made by my Nikon D eight fifty. Oh, nice! With a Zeiss fifty millimeter f one point four lens, we waited for the wind to stop long enough so the sunflowers weren't moving, but Annabelle was. This was selected uh, as one of my five photographs for the week, school wide slideshow. Oh, cool. All right, so let's take a look at this yeah. shot here. Yeah, neat image. Neat oh, concept. Oh, yeah, otherworldly. Look at that. Children of the corn. <laughs> Children yeah. of the sunflower. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's a it's a really neat technique, and techniques of, of this are, are, are hard to uh, pull off sometimes and convey what it is that you want to see because there's so much stuff going on in this image. I mean, I love the premise. I love what's going on. I like that you can see her a little bit on the left and mostly on the right. Mm -hmm. Um, this is an image that, that, that I look at for a long time, um, to try to figure out, you know, like what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And what the artist was thinking, there's another ghost of, of Annabelle right there on the, on the left. You see that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, her moving the through there. Yeah. That is, that's kind of cool. This is one of those, this is the technique that used to fool people back in the old days, right? That they wanted to show ghosts in different rooms and that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 This is, this is cool. I like it. Yeah. So when images like this, even when you're doing abstracty things, you know, rules of composition and light and, you know, rules of thirds and the sweet spots and stuff, all that still matters. So, you know, y- you've got these sunflowers that can be distracting. You've got this center spot that has sort of this depth of field issue going on, not an issue, but that's where our eyes are drawn. And then, and then you've got Annabelle, which is down there in the lower right, cut off at the knees. You know, if you were to put her in here as a portrait, and then use a shallow depth of field and stuff, then add some motion, mm. right? So that you've got the composition of a frame, you've got you've got lighting coming where you want it to light. Like if she was walking through that opening, and and then she was blurry, and then you, the, the the flowers were soft, so that we saw her, or maybe it's a shot of the flower, and then she was way in the background, sort of mysterious. I mean, the rules of composition and and where your eyes are drawn to still apply. Yeah. Right. So, you know, experimenting is is always a wonderful art. I mean, you need to do that. Yeah, yeah. Play around. I think you hit the nail on the head, though. You're you're by saying that the normal rules of composition and photography apply even when doing special effects. But I I also applaud Mark for doing in camera special effects, right? Because that that was that's old. Yeah. School. That's old school, and that's that's kind of the bug that bit me that got me interested in photography in the beginning was looking through these old special effects photography books and seeing oh you can do that oh wow you know and it got me understanding how light and film interact with each other and how an exposure is made and you know doing it now these days when you don't have to because you could you know arguably executed better in post-production but capturing it in camera kind of says a lot about you as a photographer and you know your willingness to experiment in camera versus just clicking that shutter button absolutely yeah no it's very cool very cool technique keep doing keep experimenting with that yeah yeah very cool thanks mark all right let's get out of there all right next one up is this is from zach muddyman 
submitted this three days ago. He said, this is a photo I took of a mosaic in downtown Dallas, Thanksgiving Square. I cropped in on the mural to try and create an even more dramatic scene full of life and color. This photo was taken midday on my Fujifilm X-H1 and the XF 16 to 55 F2.8 lens. Bring that up. All right. Look at that. So when I saw this, I was on the fence about this. I mean, it's technically a great shot, right? I mean, it is it is from an exposure and, and cropping standpoint. But this is a shot of another shot, right? So right, right. This is, I mean, this is, this isn't, yeah, this is, I don't know if this will call it qualify as street photography or as capturing this shot. Like, if you were to capture this shot for the person that created the mural, like okay here's that mural you created in thanksgiving square you know and give it to them but i don't know i would i was looking forward to doing this critique because i wanted to get your thoughts on this one like if someone takes a shot if you take a photograph of someone else's photograph which you know or someone else's artwork like this how does that you know how does that play in is it are you copying that work or are you reinterpreting that work where do, where do you fall on that troy that's a that's a tricky question. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you're definitely copying the work. Um, it's in a public space, so you know the ability to look at that and sort of find within that image um, what you want. I think it's going to be a really broad definition. I mean, you know, the artist may have an opinion on that. Mm -hmm. You know, he may not. He may. You know, an artist may feel like, hey, it's my art. I, you enjoy it however you want. I'm just honored that you enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and then the artist may say, well you know, you're, you're removing intentional pieces in there that I, I put in as a purpose. Right. So I think it really depends on how the photographer, um, shares that piece of work. So in this case, uh, he's sharing that it was a mural and he photographed it and he liked it and that's awesome. Yeah. And I think that's honoring the artist. If he was just to, to photograph this and, and, and share this as his art, that would be different. And I you, think, yeah, no, go ahead. So there's no, I don't, I don't see a defining line. I think that it's, it's really going to depend, especially in a public space, right? Like this art is put out in a public space as opposed to like in a museum or somebody's home. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I am still wrestling with it. Cause I think on the one hand, yeah, you know, public space, you took the photo. Um, but on the other hand, from an artist, you know, looking at it through artists eyes let's say you're at a party or you're, you, you printed this and you're doing a gallery show and the mm -hmm. artist who did the mural comes in and sees this on the wall, what, what would they say, right or wrong? What, what would their reaction be? Like, hey, you're exhibiting my work or, right. hi, nice reinterpretation of that, get that, that mural that took me nine years to put the, you know. <laughs> See, but, it's, but, but cropping it maybe doesn't, doesn't qualify as a reinterpretation, true, right? Like true. if you had taken that. I mean, but, you, you know, this is art that somebody put on a wall. How different would it be to photograph a cathedral or a castle or a house or a barn? Very true. I mean, that, Very true. That's, that belongs to somebody, some art artist created that so uh it's a very it's very challenging i i don't know where the where the law lies on this i mean this is intellectual property of the artist but he may have put it into a common place and said hey you guys enjoy it as you as you see fit yeah i think anytime that we deal with somebody else's art <clears throat> interpretively or not we do we do that with respect and we do that with credit mm -hmm. um so that so that the artist who created it is recognized for the work they put into it yeah yeah, I think like from when I look at this shot, I think it would have been like if if there was a, not to say that every shot needs a model in it, but if there was something in here like a person in like leaning against the wall, then it's like okay, he used that artist's work as a component of another shot or right. or you know, the shot is really about this model leaning up against the wall, smoking a cigarette. And therefore, I also get a sense of scale, too. Now, you know, if there's a human or some other element in the shot, now I can kind of see it. Wow, look how big that mural is or look how little that mural is, <laughs> you know. Right. You know, as it is right now, I have no visual cues about how big it is. And it is it is a I don't want to I'm, I'm dancing around the word copy. It's not a copy. It is a shot of someone's art. But you know but to have a person in here leaning against the wall or even you know a kid riding a tricycle you know through the foreground or something would have 
you know, added to it. And then it would have been like, you know, oh, those people are looking at that person, you know, or something like that. Right, right. I don't know. It, I don't it, know. It's con- I mean, it comes down to context. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, like right now it's flat. Mm-hmm. So just as an image, just the way that it's presented, it's hard for us to know the story yeah, because we don't have any context. So just from a, a, a strictly, <clears throat> say, photojournalistic perspective, this is a hard image to understand what's going on. Yeah. Because we don't see the context. So if you added some of the elements you talked about, if we could see, you know, the entire mural, uh, you know, maybe in a series or something, you know, mm-hmm. then it would help us understand the context. Because like in this image, I can't help but notice all everybody's eyes are looking somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And it seems like they're looking down. So I'm wondering, like, where's <clears throat> what's going on in the rest of the the rest of the mural? Right. Right. Um and then just something to be said for the crop, <clears throat> whether you're you're copying something, because I used to do a lot of commercial copies um, for businesses and things. And, and you always got to be careful when you crop in because it's no different, like all those heads at the bottom, right? You've got the, 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 the little girl on the right, the middle and the boy on the left. You've chosen to crop this image and you've cut their heads off, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. They're just kind of these floating heads. So... Even in documenting this wall, consider where you're putting your crop lines. You know, mm-hmm. consider whose whose face you're cropping off, whom face you're including, body parts, things like that. Helps to helps to document the story better. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, because even if you were to pose this, that would be a condition. You would think about that. Yeah, yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah, if these were humans that you were taking a group shot, you would absolutely think about that. You know, yeah. and then we have no way of knowing that, you know, maybe the mural was actually like this. And the, the could be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the person who put the mosaic together in the beginning actually put it together like that. But we don't know because we don't have any context. Yeah. Oh, very cool. So, yeah, I would encourage the folks in the TwitPro community and, and Zach to comment on this and our comments on this and let us know what you were thinking when you shot this and, you know, what what constitutes sort of documenting someone else's work or copying not saying that he's copying anything but you know what that that's that's the not controversy but that's the the dialogue that i want to start like what is copying what is artistic interpretation you know would this have been different if there was another element in in there to add scale those sorts of things so I would love to know what the uh, the smarter folks in the Twit Pro community <laughs> think about this. Yeah, yeah, but fair to say this is this is a well captured um, mural. I mean, sharp corner to corner. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's you down know, to the it, shadows around the little the yeah, little and that's that's a, that's an important point to realize is that you know you could have just walked up and shot this at an odd angle, and then you know we'd have distortion and soft corners, but you didn't. You chose to to keep it all sharp, so that's really good. Yep, very nice, very nice, cool. Good stuff coming in. Thanks a lot, Zach. All right, let's close out of that one. Let's move on to the next one here. And this one is from Harry Hensey. So he says, this is from Robert Treeman State Park. Uh, the CC is welcome. I guess that means constructive criticism is welcome. I like the photo, but something seems a little off. I thought someone here might see what I am missing. So let's bring it up and see if we see what he is missing. All right, I'll let you go first. What do you think? Um, I, I, I th- it's a, it's a cool concept. <clears throat> nice image. I mean, I, I love the colors and, you know, the smooth water and everything. I think one of the things that 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 you might be struggling with here is where is your eye drawn? Mm-hmm. So our eyes are drawn to things that are in focus, and then we're also drawn to things that are bright. Yeah. So in this image, we have a lot of things that our eyes are really kind of trying to find. Like we want to look at the waterfall, but it's not sharp. Mm-hmm. But it's bright, mm-hmm. and then and then we look over to the right behind the flowers because that's kind of bright, and that's competing with the in focus, which is the flowers. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really what's going on here is that that our eyes, our brain is just kind of like I don't know where to settle, I don't know where the sweet spot is, and that's that's tough. Yeah. So in this situation, I think that it would have been better to photograph this shot with the water in focus. And use the flowers as a vignetting foreground element that was a hint of color. And then I think you'd be much happier with the balance, the light balance, the compositional balance. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Everything you said, um, the, we talk a lot, of, a lot about subject, right? And when you first look at a photo, your eye searches for the subject. And like you're saying, um, the, the natural 
the natural inclination is to look towards the brightest thing. And then, like you said, the sharpest thing or the things of highest frequency. Um, and there's, there's literally two, at least two subjects in here. There's the waterfall, like you said, and then also the, the flowers and the waterfall is out of focus and the foreground or the mid ground between the waterfall and the flowers is out of focus. And then the flowers come into focus. So my brain, when I, when I first looked at the shot, I immediately, cause I looked at it t small before I blew it up. I immediately thought, Oh, that's out of focus. The whole thing is like, cause I didn't notice the photos cause uh, the, the flowers, cause they're so small in the image. So right. I immediately thought this is an out of focus image because uh, an, an out of focus image of a waterfall. Why would we submit that? And then when I blew it up big, I see the sharp flowers in there, which is an indication that, you know, either get in tighter on those flowers and make the waterfall more blurry and subordinate to and make the, the flowers the topic or make the waterfall the topic and the flowers become an element of the or a supporting character to the to the waterfall itself. So. Right, right, absolutely. And when you're standing in situations like this, um, you know, what you can do is you can close one eye mm -hmm. and look around the frame. Because as soon as you close one eye, you, you, you lose that um, depth of field, mm -hmm. right? The, the depth mm -hmm. perception that you have. And that can kind that can help you because if when you you're look shooting, at, you mean you mean when you're shooting the shot? Yeah, before yeah. you take the photo, you can do it through the camera too. Mm -hmm. But just just look through one eye, and then if you're looking through the camera, bounce your eye back and forth from one part of the subject to the other, and blur your eyes and see what it looks like through the camera, blurry through your eyes, or you can even defocus the camera. What pops out? Mm -hmm. That's your subject. Yeah. Whether, whether you intend for it to be or not, that is where our eyes are going to go to. So then you choose how to manipulate or interpret that scene based on, we'll call it those rules. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. 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 I, this is, this is interesting. This is one of those images why, this is why we do critiques to help people understand those, those sorts of, you know, I, I hesitate to use the word rules, but you know, the suggestions in creating creating photography but i love i love the term rules because rules are meant to be broken right and if go. you don't if you don't lay out a rule then i can't break them and i like to break them so if you don't call them rules then i can't have any fun so <laughs> that's because you're an anarchist that's, <laughs> that's spoken like a true anarchist right there <laughs> All right, let's get rid of this one. Thank you, Harry. This is this is great, and it's fun, thank you yeah. for submitting that. Uh, moving on to the next one. This one's from Araxo Pichel. He says, uh, "Bring this up." He says, "Street is not my genre." As I said in a previous post, I tend to hide behind long lens, behind a long lens, and I get anxious when shooting people in the street. But sometimes happy accidents happen. In this case, I saw this couple, mother and daughter, maybe take talking. Um, in a bench. It was hot in Madrid. So I also sat nearby. I took three photographs and this is probably the best of the series. I like the expression on their faces and sense that the young girl is saying, just let me WhatsApp in peace or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I know I read that. I thought it was great. I love that. Uh, I wish I had frames slightly to the left so that the bench is not almost touching the board of the frame, but I don't have my flux capacitor with me today. <laughs> <laughs> nice all right all right you got to give him extra points for back to the future references yeah any any sci-fi reference gets extra points i know yeah. extra points there uh all comments critiques ideas and suggestions are more than welcome image details canon eos 650d uh ef 50 millimeter lens at 1.8 um, iso 100 at 1 640th of a second processed in dark table and he was mentioning dark table is that open source um, Linux Lightroom type app, I think. Right, right. Uh, we'll bring this up here. Yeah, no, I saw this when he posted it. This is really nice. This is one of my, one, definitely one of my favorite images. I mean, I, I really enjoy this interaction. Although I photograph people all the time and I'm pretty comfortable around people, I don't, I can't do street, street stuff. Just, it's really hard to approach somebody or, you know, get as this close with a 50 or, or a 35 millimeter and take a shot. And, you know, those people that do that, I mean, that's a, that's really cool. It's very creative and it's an uncomfortable thing. And, uh, when I'm out, that's one of the things I always tell myself, you got to do more street because it makes you uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? I can totally talk to somebody, 
and then and then I could go up and talk to them and ask their permission, do portraits and stuff. That'd be great. But the street stuff is is tough. Yeah. So kudos for that. Um, I agree with his critique. Uh, you know, his self critique about the space on the left. I was mm -hmm. I wish it was a little bit sharper on our girl there. <clears throat> great timing. Um, in situations like this, just get used to what your camera's capable of. Um, it's overexposed in the background, and that's okay. But if you if you knew right away, like, oh, that bright building in the back, I'm going to underexpose it by, you know, a stop, a stop and a half, and then bring the shadows back up in post, you might get a little grain in the shadows, but then you'll have that nice detail in the highlights. Mm, yeah. And yeah. that's that's just knowing what your camera is capable of doing. Right, right. Yeah, when I was looking at this, I, yeah, I agree with him as well in terms of the leaving a little bit of space on the left side. But you know, and I agree with your, what you're saying too about bringing those highlights down. Uh, but here's what was what was uh, what was getting me about this image. So, you know, he's saying leave me. She was the the younger girl saying leave me in peace while I just WhatsApp. What I was thinking was she might be saying, you know, lady, I don't know you. Would you mind getting your foot <laughs> off of me? And the lady saying, "There's plenty of space on the edge of that of the edge of the bench. Yeah, Just slide over, over a little bit." And she's like, "I sat here first. Why is your foot on my leg?" <laughs> I'm calling the police. I'm calling the police right now. Uh, that's, I'm dialing them. Get your foot off me. I'm gonna dial. Put your foot back in your flip flop. <laughs> Your 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 interpretations are always somehow confrontational. I know what's going on with me. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I, I dig it though. I, I, you know, these are the kind of shots that are, are some of my favorite genres because you could, you have to look through the image and you keep looking and you keep looking and you keep seeing more and you're like, ah, the flip flop on the ground and they're both holding their phones mm -hmm. and, you know, I, the it's nasty just, foot on the public the nasty bench. Foot on the bench. <laughs> just leave, leave it all sorts of athletes' foot for the next person to sit on. <laughs> <laughs> Frederick's foot phobia. <laughs> See, you're gonna go. You're gonna go to Madrid. You're gonna sit on that bench. You're gonna remember yeah. while you're, you're gonna be eating your nice sandwich on that bench. <laughs> no, I take little handy sanitary wipes with me everywhere I go. <laughs> Wipe down the public bench. Because <laughs> <laughs> now I know they put their feet on there. Oh my god, I'm sure more than that's happened on that bench. So. <laughs> Good. All right. All right, Araxo. Thank you so much for that. That's yeah, a, awesome. A, awesome shot. Very cool. We have too much fun doing these critiques, man. They are good. All right. Craig Stanfley. Uh, this is cool. All right. So Craig says, a slightly different take on astrophotography. For this image, I used the 85 millimeter prime to fill the frame with the windmill. In Australia, the main brand associated with windmills is Southern Cross. Tech specs are 5D Mark III, 85 millimeter lens at F2, ISO 2000, 10 second exposure. Let's bring this guy up. Wow. Look at that. 10 seconds. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Wonder how it was lit. Did he light it? Did he didn't didn't say. He didn't say. <clears throat> no. No. Yeah, I wonder how that was lit. I wonder if that's just ambient light from some light source that's close to there or did he flashlight it and just paint with lights? Paint with light. How long did he say the ex the exposure was? 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Yeah, so he could have painted with light, right? Yeah, it doesn't look like painted with light though. It looks like a strobe or maybe a light from a building or something. Mm -hmm. And the and the light's fairly close to right behind the camera. So I, I dig it. I, I wish it was a little punchier. I wish we had a little bit more contrast in the blacks, because I know that, that sky was was darker. Mm -hmm. Um but uh and a little more space around the windmill. But not I mean not by much. I mean it's a it's a cool shot. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I, I, I agree with the space around the windmill, but I kind of like this. I like the sky like that because it it kind of reminds me of a nebula, you know. And we're looking we're looking at the Milky Way behind it, which is you know cloudy, right? So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's but subjective. The, but the space in between the stars are dark. True. Very right? true. So yeah, yeah. bring that, that's all I'm saying is bring the black to the point where they should be black. Uh, um, right, and that would make the Milky Way pop out a little more too, right? It would definitely make it pop out a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. But what a cool concept! I like it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Southern Cross windmills, huh? Yeah, that's old windmills. The windmills that I have in my neighborhood are nothing like that. They're uh, <laughs> they're these Elon Musk looking high tech space nineteen ninety nine looking windmills <laughs> that are yeah they have blades on them that are the size of two semi trucks stacked you know lined up together. Yeah, yeah. Cool. To be fair, they're not windmills anymore. What? What? I mean, because a windmill was a mill, right? That's they used it for a mill mm -hmm. to mill uh, to mill corn and stuff. Like they don't mill anymore. Like this may have been a water pump. So, oh yeah, you know, yeah. what do you call them? Wind pump? Would it be a wind pump? I think we just go with windmill. <laughs> you Americans have to label everything. <laughs> Let's just go with windmill. <laughs> you know, I'm different just, sizes of windmill. They do different. Things. I'm just throwing up. <laughs> crap for you to to bat at that's all i'm doing exactly it's like t-ball today What's i going set on? i set the ball and you didn't spike it i'm upset <laughs> no craig sampley thank you so much for that by the way craig uh oh here's another craig image um this one says the lazy guy to bird photography camera on a tripod <laughs> <laughs> camera on a tripod man let me bring this up while i'm bringing uh, manual focus to a spot where the birds will be long cable release bird food <laughs> and a beer for the photographer <laughs> 5d mark 3 17 millimeter at f11 the 60th of a second the cuckatoos are reasonably well trained to pose for the camera but when there is food and are considering they are wild birds will often eat from my hand yeah so this is a wild bird i guess so look at that that's amazing let's bring him up big yeah, that's 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 really cool. It's a really cool shot. It, it's it's that's the way that I would want to do bird photography. Yeah, because I'm not a birder. With so, a beer, a beer in a lawn with chair. A beer. <laughs> yeah, a beer and some Tim Tams. <laughs> some Tim Tams. <laughs> yeah, we still Craig Stampley. We still have to record our video that will star Tim Tams. So <laughs> we do, we do. And to be fair, um, my uh, Alan's uh, classic party mix, whatever. Oh my god! I'm almost done with the bag. Those things are the most delicious candies I have ever had. Really? The teeth are the best. Yeah, you got to have the teeth. Wow! I think I see some of them in that little pan right there in front of this cookie. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Awesome. This is cool. So, no, uh, I, creativity wise, what do you think of the show? I, you know, I, I like the shot. I like the timing. Um, I even like the little blur in the wings. I don't know if the face is totally sharp, which is. No, it's not totally. It's not totally sharp. Mm -hmm. um, but he he does have a beer, so we yeah. got to give him extra points, you know, for that. Um, you know, shallow depth of field, though. You know, set up a uh, twenty-four to one four or an eighty-five one four. You know, your your critical focus is going to be harder to get. You know, maybe at f two two eight or something. Mm -hmm. um, but try to get that background to go away a yeah. little bit. Yeah. I think that I think that that's going to help the shot overall. Um, but cool timing though. I mean, it's it's still fun. It's still mm -hmm. neat. Yeah, no, absolutely. He's got that. He's got the the perfect symmetry on that on the bird's face too, right? Looking dead at the yeah. camera. Yeah, like, and I, I've got a friend of mine that goes to I think it's Puerto Rico, and he photographs uh, frogs. Mm. And you're you're in a cabana. You're in a covered tent. They have food. They have tables, and they bring frogs out and they put them on the plants in front of you. Really? <laughs> yeah, you don't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Wow, just... At first, I'm like, these are amazing. And, he, and then he shows me the shot of where they're sitting. And there's like 20 photographers. They're sitting there drinking and eating. Uh... And a guy, a frog handler comes out and puts it on the leaf. And they all go click, 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 click. A frog handler. <laughs> <laughs> My only my only um, negative comment about this shot is the I agree with what you're saying about, you know, maybe shallower depth of field to throw it to lose that background a little bit. But there's a piece of trash up there in the tree or something up in the tree up there. I probably would have cloned that out. Oh, there that. is. How did I miss that? I don't know. I don't I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to go with that. It's not trash, that it's a broken branch. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a broken branch. It's in the shape of a. A bag, bag hanging <laughs> over the branch, yeah. Yeah, that would have been an easy I, clone job to get that out of there, I think. Yeah, and I just noticed maybe a little a little uh, white balance on the bird's feathers because they look a little blue. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you just wanted to throw that in there because I found the trash. That's right, right. Doing. I see what you're doing. <laughs> Frederick plus one. Uh-huh. All right. Craig Stampley. Thank you, sir. Cool. Yeah, cool shot. Here's another one by Craig. Oh, yeah, look at that. Craig's crushing it. 
Uh, this surfer girl was putting the guys to shame, consistently riding waves that the others didn't seem to be able to catch, taken while wading knee deep in the Pacific Ocean on a beach in northern New South Wales, 5, 5D3, 200 millimeter lens at F28, ISO 100 at 1 500th of a second. Right, yeah, it's a cool shot. Yeah, I dig it. Great timing, good composition. Look how tack sharp that is. That is crazy. Yeah. There's a little bit of halo around there. I wonder if, if he did some clarity work on her. Can you see that, or is it just me? Is it my imagination? No, I see that. I, I'm, I'm guessing that he dodged her a little bit, because mm -hmm. it looks like the light is coming like way off to her right. Cause mm -hmm. you can see her right palm is lit really well, yeah. which means that her face, her left side should be darker. I'm thinking that he dodged that a little bit. Um, yeah. And lost a little detail on her head there, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be okay if it, if, if, if it went a little bit more contrasty to match the water and stuff. I don't think we need to see into her face. I think that the, the silhouette that that would provide would be fine. Mm -hmm. um, might crop up a little from the bottom I just to get rid of some that. of that. I knew it. I knew it. I was waiting. I was waiting. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't add, right? It's not adding to the image, right? A little bit of wash is fine. Yep. And then the vignette is maybe a tad heavy in the in the corners. In the upper right, yeah, I can see it, especially upper right, lower lo lower right. Well, actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. maybe all, all four corners. Yeah, just a tad. But I, I mean, because I can see the transition, I wouldn't mm -hmm. say that it can't be dark. I would just say make that transition less noticeable mm -hmm. i like heavy i like heavy vignettes me too me too yeah so yeah life, great life looks better vignetted yeah yeah it does yeah. slightly oversaturated vignetted at uh wide apertures that's the way yeah i, I like to see that. and and you know for surf photography this is really well handled because the wave that she's on is in focus from the left edge of the the image to the right and that's really nice because it keeps us in that plane with her. So if you're shooting at an extreme angle, sometimes the the the, the left and right can be soft and that can be distracting. But this is nice that 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 horizontal plane is in focus. Yeah. Or it you know it's it's perceivably sharp. So it's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, and that water is just crazy sharp too. Those waves behind her. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Those are like spot on. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Hey, cannons can do some good work. <laughs> Um, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the last time I said something, there was a show about it. So, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. See how things happen? You can trigger an entire show. Yeah. Yeah. I love can cannons, are wonderful. I think that no, I'm kidding. Yeah, Craig Sampley, thank you for that, man. Uh, here's another one. This is from our friend Stephen Scharf. Even Sharf. I was just there a couple, like a month ago. Yeah, he says, this is the Mono Lake Sunset. Sunset at South Tufa, Mono Lake State Park, Le uh, Lee Vining, California. The Fujifilm X-T1 23mm F1.4 at F9. Yeah, oh yeah, at F9 for seven and a half seconds. Raw conversion with Iridient Developer. Edits with Lightroom and Photo Lemur, single frame exposure, no HDR. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is uh, Iridient Developer? Do you know what that is? Raw no. conversion. He did his raw conversion with Iridient Developer. I think that's a Fuji specific converter. Oh, I've never heard of that. Huh. Yeah, I think so. Steven, yeah. you'll have to tell us about that. If you could uh, comment on this photo, let us know where the Iridient Developer is. Yeah, yeah. No, this is this is my favorite spot in in mono and by the way i don't I, i'm no authority but i was told that mono is a disease mono is how you pronounce it mono so, so not mononucleosis this is mono mono yeah like. i was i was told by a local in bridgeport who corrected me <laughs> okay so what's the opposite of stereo mono <laughs> <laughs> All right. You I know, I, I'm just going to have to go with mispronouncing mono for this. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I just thought I'd put that out there. A little trivia. I'm going to go with trivia. mono. I'm going to go with mono because you're like, because you ask anyone like, hey, I'm going to mono, mono lake. And you're like, what? Oh, yeah, mono lake. Okay. Oh, yeah. I've been there. <laughs> oh, what God. are these structures, by the way? What is that limestone? Or what uh, they're they're chemical they're they're mineral deposits that are formed from the bottom of the lake as the gas percolates up through the bottom, it carries minerals. So these are only formed underwater. Hmm. 
Yeah, so everything that you see, all the cool stuff that, that we like to photograph, was only formed underwater. And then, so then it gets pushed up? No, no, no. They only form underwater. So the oh, water the, level the, the water to... level drops. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The water level is is much lower than than they would like it to be there. Um, although it makes for some some beautiful scenery for us, and the birds love it. Um, yeah, these are all formed underwater, so the the lake is is low. It's actually I was just there. What I would say that the water is actually up a little bit than what it's been in the in the last few years. But hmm. um, now there was another thing I heard about. Mono Lake, uh, <laughs> uh, Mono Lake. So the other thing I heard was was there's like these these flies out there that that yeah. love the brine or the salt water or or yeah. the chemicals in the water and they're swarming out there. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, they're brine flies. Um, so the thing is, is you, you get this interpretation of flies in your head. You're like, ah, oh, they're in my food, they're in mm -hmm. my face. Brine flies aren't like that. They live on the shore. They're tiny little black flies, and they, you can literally walk through them, and they just part. They don't want to have anything to do with you. Hmm. They won't bother you at all. You, can, they don't bite. you can lay on the ground, and they'll just move. They don't bite like some of those Australian flies that'll just nope. uh, take, a nope. chunk of, take a chunk of skin out of you and take off? Nope. The thing about, the thing about uh, being on Mono when the sun sets is the gnats come out. Mm. And they literally rise, and you can hear as that you can hear them as they lift off, and then they they head for your ears. Oh. Yeah, it's awful. I got, I've got shots that when I was there, they literally just filled my lens. I had to stop shooting. I was shooting the moon. I had to stop because they were filling the lens. They were everywhere. It was awful. Oh, yeah. But the brine flies won't bother you. Yeah. See, they don't mention the gnats. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what do you think about the shot now that we've talked about all the science and wildlife around the shot? Yeah, 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 yeah. I love the shot, Stephen. This is this is an amazing image. This is it's it's hard to shoot in this area because there's so many tufas and there's so many things to distract you and to get a good composition of this um is really difficult. And he you know, you did a really good job handling this. I, I just I wish it was a little less noisy mm -hmm. in the sky and maybe it's over processed. I don't know. It doesn't hold me back. Yeah. But um, the reflection is really cool. It's it's really nice. It, like I said, this is my favorite spot to shoot. So, yeah, yeah. I've shot a lot over here. Yeah, that was my, my comment as well. It seems to be for the camera that he was using. This seems to be noisy, a little bit no, on the noisy side. Um, but that, you know, in terms of composition, Love it. You know, it's otherworldly. Steve and mm -hmm. I were having a, had a, had a short interchange on Twit Pro about the shot. And he was saying that because I mentioned it looked alien. And he says, yeah, they found they found water on Mars. And I was like, yeah, but the, that's underwater, under underground water they found on Mars. <laughs> it's not like this. It's not a giant lake with bot flies and gnats. It's uh... <laughs> with bot flies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, or brine with, flies, with, brine flies. <laughs> with gorilloids and pigoids and yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But cool shot. I really want to go there. I I need to go to this place. This is like what is this like from from Sacramento? What is this like a couple hours away? Three hours. I think it's like three hours. Yeah. I yeah. Need to get there. I need yeah. To and after you're done photographing here, you go to the you go to the mobile gas station and have dinner. At the mobile gas station. Yeah. Was yeah. it like a truck stop kind of place? No, it's it's like a four or five star. It's amazing food. It's really? amazing. Yeah. Oh, it's not yeah. a gas station where you're like sitting on lawn chairs next to the next to the rest area. No, no, they got picnic area, big big grass picnic area, but the food is fantastic there. And then what's it called? It's it's a mobile gas station. It's the God. What is it? It's um it's the route that goes into Yosemite. It's the backside of Tuolumne Meadows. But it but it is a mo like mobile yeah. as in the giant oil company. They have a. Yeah. A restaurant that makes good food? Yep. You can go in and you can buy beer and Gatorade and you can get amazing jambalaya or pizza and you then get your gas, get your diesel, sit out there, watch the sunset because you can see Mon Mono Lake from there. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's cool. Hey, another reason to go. Cool. Thank you. For yeah. That. Thanks for that tip. And thanks for that shot, Stephen Sharp. Very cool. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. So yeah, here in the comments, I said it looks alien. And what did he say? 
Uh, I said it looks alien, uh, and then he said, could be Mars. You know, they discovered liquid water on Mars about a week ago. And I said, but that wasn't liquid mar- water. And then, of course, Stephen <laughs> had to come back, and he says, ah, but geology is always changing. Just go back to Point Lowell's every five years ago or the famous Snake River Overlook at <laughs> the Grand Teton. <laughs> so, yeah, you can't, you can't win with Stephen. Stephen, Stephen is a – I think Stephen is um, – you remember Data from Star Trek? <laughs> yeah i think that's steven steven is that smart <laughs> so, it's quite possible if you read his little bio in in there yeah, uh-huh a, he knows he knows way too much for any single human to know so <laughs> all right i'm gonna bring this one up from joe jordan he says taken at sunrise on the beach of isle of white let's bring this up it's not coming up huh no it's not coming up is it it's not coming up for you either no huh. i can see the thumbnail Huh? How come that's not coming up? I thought it was just—I thought it was just me. No. Huh? Interesting. All right, Joe, you have to resubmit that one, and we'll uh, we'll review it. Maybe it looks like he posted it from the Android app. Maybe there's something something wonky in there. But uh, yeah, repost that, Joe, and uh, we'll we'll review it next week. All right. The next one is from Christopher Barry. You know that guy. Yeah. And he's a man of few words, much like Tim Engel. Photo critique, smiley face. <laughs> That's it. Photo critique, smiley face. Let's bring this one up. So, yeah, I saw this one when he first posted it. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is interesting. Like, I'm looking at her, and, like, when I look at her face, I don't know. Are her eyes... I, I feel like her eyes are crossed, but I can't tell. Like, I look at her one day... Like yesterday, I looked at him like her eyes are crossed. And then I look at her today. No, they're not. So I can't tell. But she's like, I love this kind of portrait, extreme shallow depth of field because she's like the tip of her nose, I think, is soft. Her eyes, eyebrows and lips are sharp and the skin texture on her cheek is sharp. And then Mm -hmm. as you go back out of focus, her ears are completely out of focus. So that's like a slice of depth of field on here. What do do you think of this shot? Uh, You know, it's a it's a cool concept. I I really struggle with with shots where you're cropping off the top of the head Mm. and like the chin and stuff. I, I don't know if it's more of the traditional portrait. Uh, photographer in me or not. I mean, I, I, I love the fact that this is creating tension and I love the fact that that's happening. So maybe that's, you know, th- that's working, right? It's art, it's interpretive and, and, um, it's different uh, when, whenever you shoot with a wide angle lens and I say wide, like a 50 or a 35 and you're doing portraits, you got to make sure that the subject doesn't focus on the camera, mm-hmm. which she may be doing. And that gives that sense of it pulls her eyes in a little bit. You got to let her look past you, oh, um, you like know, look over, at, like not focus on you focus yep. on a picture on the wall that's behind you or something. <clears throat> yeah. Because then her eyes will center. Oh, so that's the one thing when you come in closer because, excuse me if you're giving her directions and she's looking at you or she's looking at the camera and you're really close those eyes are going to pull in a little bit Mm. Uh, he did post uh, in in part of the conversation i don't think it was in the critique i think it was somewhere else where he posted a a larger uh, or a fuller frame and i really dig that shot so Everything's handled really well. I love the shallow depth of field. I love the expression. I love the off center to the right a little bit, camera right. I'm a little bothered by the crop. Mm-hmm. You know, at mm-hmm. least give me the chin. I at least, let me have the chin. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. I'm okay with the forehead, but the chin. Um, but it's it's a very cool shot. Yeah, it's very well handled. Very nice, cool. All right, you know, straightforward portrait, very clean, very light makeup on the model, and yeah, I agree. Yeah, the, I I never knew that technique of having them look past you, so that's that's valuable. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and you don't just you don't tell them why you're doing it, but as you're talking to them, you'd be like, okay, all right, all right, Deborah, so do me a favor, just look at the, just kind of focus on the wall directly behind my head. Oh, that's perfect. All right, and then you move, and they don't even know why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See how that I just named her. I have no idea if her name's Deborah. But. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know what I normally do? Like if I'm shooting models like this, I'll I'll literally point into the lens. I'm like, okay, now look in the lens right now. Blah, blah, blah. And you're saying don't if you're close like this, right? So yeah. yeah but I, if you're far away, if you're if you're like say you know six feet or more away, then that's less appropriate, right? Yeah. It doesn't become as big a uh, situation. Yeah. Of a condition. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. All right, Chris Berry, thank you for this. 
photo critique. Yeah. All right. The next one, Kyle Nishioka in the house. Kyle says, lantern, flo- lantern floating ceremony at Baido Inn Temple. There's an authentic Japanese Buddhist temple in the back of a cemetery in Kiniho, Kinahoi, Hawaii, that holds an annual bond dance and lantern floating ceremony. This is similar to that scene in Karate Kid 2. And come to think of it, the location where this where that scene was filmed in the movie is only a couple of miles from this temple. Interesting. Very cool. Oh, wow. Let's bring this up. Look at that. Classic t- Kyle Nishio- Nishioka uh, border on there with his watermark in the lower right. Look at that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I dig it. I dig it. It's a nice shot. Well composed. I like the leading lines of the lanterns leaving the frame on the right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all the people there. I... I, I would I would crop the left lanterns out, you know, on the left side of the frame. Those I don't think two, we need those two floating there. Yeah, yeah. And then would just you, increase... would you crop them out? Or would you clone them out and leave the building? I'd crop it. I don't think we need that all that space over there. Okay. You know, I crop it off maybe at that first pillar right above the bush, <clears throat> and that draws our eyes into the center a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And then I'd probably just increase the black point. I don't, mm. We don't need to see into the deep shadow because our subject is actually the 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 lanterns because they're in focus and then the people releasing them are secondary. So let let them go dark. Let that let that drop off. Yeah. Well, what, be what more the, dramatic. What about the noise? How do you feel about the noise in this shot? Well, I don't think you would have the noise if you didn't try to bring up the shadows. Oh yeah, yeah. Or you have less noise for sure. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I would go down. I would bring it down a lot and increase the contrast. So you saw the highlights on the trees and the building and the background, um, but really just on those on those lanterns. And I think that would that would move our focus. I mean, it's a cool shot. Well, well done. Yeah, yeah. I love the reflection of those lanterns in the water too. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I need to go rewatch Karate Kid too because I don't remember the scene in there. I, in fact, I don't even know if I've seen for Karate Kid. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe only Karate Kid won. I don't know. Huh. Very cool. And Kyle Nishioka, thank you for submitting that. Very cool. Yeah, he's got himself in in here as a glamour photographer. He is not just a glamour photographer, though. Sorry. I think you're pigeonholing yourself as a glamour photographer. You need to change that, Kyle, to yeah. just artist or creative or, you know, image maker or storyteller or something like that because you're yeah. – you or renaissance man or something because you're <laughs> you are not you're you're typecasting and pigeonholing yourself into just glamour yeah all right and last but not least oh my god look at this one all right what did troy miller say about this one he says i titled this one bullet to the hard drive this was from a series i shot for a forensic lab in texas as artwork for their new lab is a nikon d5 120 millimeter macro f16 at 250th of a second iso 640 tuned in capture one of course it's got to be tuned in (laughs) capture 111 most people post process troy miller tunes his images (laughs) Uh, because they're nearly perfect in camera and uh, yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> eight if we have well, if it was perfect in camera why'd you shoot eight images and focus stack them in infinity photo <laughs> because you can't get that depth of field when you're that close let me bring this up look at this god it's so cool that is really really cool man this reminds me of um is it, is it devil's peak and is it Utah or somewhere? Remember in uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, yeah. the, the mountain Richard Dreyfus was sculpting out of mashed potatoes? Oh, that's funny. I never saw that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You never saw the movie? You never did no, see no, the I reference? No, no, I didn't see that image. Oh, I mean, yeah. I didn't see that in the image, yeah. That's the first thing I saw. I'm like, this looks like Devil's Peak, you know, where those aliens were landing. This is this is crazy. It looks otherworldly. The angle makes it look like a mountain. And yep. it's hard to figure out what it is, which is what your goal was, I, I assume, right? So tell tell me, tell us about this image. So if you were to rotate this uh, counterclockwise, so it'd be standing up, mm-hmm. that would be the platter, right? And so this is the hole that the round made as it passed through the platter. Wow. Yeah. And I thought the platter would shatter, but it didn't. It just makes these really bitching holes because wow. the platters, the platters are um, silicon. Mm-hmm. So uh, they're actually quite flexible, and I guess when the round hits it, you know, it superheats the point of impact, and then they just melt and just pushes those out. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, yeah. 
Was this the, I did a whole bunch. Was, was this recent after the bullet had passed through or 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 was it like, you know, days later you just you made the shot? Oh, the, these are weeks later. Yeah, oh, okay, I, I, okay. Yeah, I took a bunch of hard drives out, took them apart and shot all the platters and just try I just trying to create some abstract art. Uh, uh, you fired you fired the bullet too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. This, this is a 9 millimeter round. I was going to ask that. Oh, this is what Yeah. Jeez. I don't want that going through me, man. That would be. <laughs> good grief. Yeah. Wow. Was this your nine millimeter or theirs? Mine. Yours? Yeah. Yeah. H and K nine millimeter. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. I don't have any slow motion of this one, but I shot a whole bunch of stuff. I'll post some more images there. They just. I was just looking for something abstracty that I could photograph. Um, and where'd you and shoot this? this? Was, did you shoot this in your where? At home? In your in your where? Where where did you capture it? Um, there's a shooting range not far from my house. It's a private gun range that I'm a member of, so I was able to take them out there. And I, I mean, where, no, I mean, where did you where did you capture the photo? I guess when you're talking, oh, when you're talking about weapon photography, you gotta <laughs> you gotta specify, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The this was actually done in the garage um, after the fact. I have a box of you know pieces that I fo- that I shot. Wow, that's beautiful. Very yeah. beautiful. They, uh, my sister-in-law works for a forensic lab in Texas, and they were re- redoing the lab, and they wanted some cool art on the wall, and so this was, this was the start. Very cool. I like it. I dig it. This this looks like it wants to be big, man. This like, this wants to be printed. Oh, it was printed big, like twenty by thirties. Oh, Pretty really? Big. Oh, very yeah, cool. Yeah. Nice, nice work. Thanks for putting this in there. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Well, yeah, that's it. I think we made it through everything. Um, what do you think of the, the today's today's harvest? I love it. Keep it up. I love the I love the new way that we're sharing the images and getting to see all the details from how they shot them and the frequency of submissions is great. The quality of the work is fantastic. So it makes it fun, right? It makes it it's it's, it's inspirational for me at least too to see all the cool stuff people are doing. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. And that uh it just makes sense to do it that way, I think. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, it works the other way, you know, pulling the images down and showing them in preview. But this way is just so much better, you know, because and I got to I have to give credit where credit's due. Stephen Scharf suggested to to at least read the the data or the the comments, not the comments, but the description that goes along with that people write with each image. And yeah. uh, I think that was a, that was a brilliant suggestion. So thank you, Stephen Scharf, for yeah, that. Good. Yeah. All right. Any parting? Any parting thoughts? Um, you want to, you know, make sh- make sure people know about F sixty four live. This is your last chance. To, I know to speak about F sixty four live on camera before it's, you know, next time we talk about it, it'll be history, right? So, I know it will be. We'll yeah. be talking about all the fun that we had. <clears throat> yeah. Um, F sixty four live dot com. We're in Southern California and Riverside. Uh, corona area so if you can find yourself there that'd be cool we're gonna have tons of models and uh nine instructors each one taking everybody out for three hours each having a good time uh frederick is going to be our keynote speaker and we're going to be walking around doing interviews with everybody creating some social media content and some cool stuff to share with everybody that couldn't be there yeah yeah it's going to be a good time i'm looking forward yeah. to it very much looking forward to it. Well, cool, man. Thank you. Uh, thanks for taking the time again on a busy Monday to do this of course. and putting up with me being late to. Uh, start, <laughs> start to do. You were right kind of our on. running gag is, you know, I'm like, yeah, we're going to do it at 11. And then, uh, you know, 1030. Can we do it at 1130? <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't be on time now because I'll break the streak. So, you know, you got to keep it going. Cool, man. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Troy. I appreciate it. All right, buddy. Take care. Have a good one. All right, you too. All right, folks. We'll see you uh, in the next Twip Pro Photo Critique member. Just head over to twippro.com if you're not already a member and you can join up. Uh, the first two weeks are free. So, and then after that, it's just four ninety nine a month. So, uh, head over there and join us and submit some images so that we can talk about them in these critiques and otherwise interact with all the cool photographers that are hanging out in the Twip yep. Pro community. All right, we'll see you guys next week.